Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we are in Job chapter 20. Job chapter 20, beginning in verse 1. We will look at Zophar, another one of Job's so-called friends. He will give his final speech in this chapter. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. do want to remind you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Remember, you can study all of God's Word with me just like we're going to do today. Only there, you can choose from four complete series. This is the fifth, going through the whole Bible. And you choose the book, the chapter, the section, click and listen. And all you need to bring is your Bible to thebibleversebyverse.com. Father, I already prayed. Sorry. Then answered so far the Naamathite and said, Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer, and for this I make haste. Zophar is going to take another shot at Job. Zophar could not keep his mouth shut because he thought he had all the answers. 3. I have heard the rebuke that putteth me to shame. And the spirit of my understanding causeth me to answer. Job told Zophar that he was wrong. Then Zophar said, Job, you've insulted me. Zophar also says, Job, I've called you a terrible sinner. And and that is why you are suffering. And I'm not going to back down from that. Even though he had no evidence, of course. Four. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth. So far says, Job, do you not know how things have been since man's beginning? Five, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. You see where he's going with this. So far tells Job that the good times of the wicked don't last long. Verse six. Though his excellency mounts up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, so far says that rich person can make it big. They become rich and famous, of course, through their unrighteousness. Well, that's true. Seven, yet he shall perish before forever like his own dung. They who have seen him shall say, where is he? So far tells Job that The end of the wicked is going to be terrible, and they will be forgotten and despised like raw sewage. 8. He shall fly away like a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away like a vision of the night. The wicked, though one time famous and really prosperous, will be forgotten like a dream that can't be remembered, Zophar says. And so far, everything he's saying is true. 9. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. So far says that the wicked will become forgotten nobodies. 10. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. So far says that the children of the ungodly suffer the consequences of their parents' sin. And of course, Job lost 10 of his children, so you can see what the implication is right here against Job. 11. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Often the wicked will die in the prime of life because their lifestyle is exactly what Zophar is saying here. That's what he's talking about. Their lifestyle kills them young. 12. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue. In other words, Zophar says that the wicked savor evil. 13. Though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, 
<clears throat> so far says that the wicked prolong their evil for as long as they possibly can. 14. Yet his food in his body is turned. It is the gall of asps within him. So far says that sin is like poison food, meaning that it may taste good, but before long, you're going to pay because you're going to get violently ill. 15. He that swallowed down riches, he hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. The wicked love their sin, even though they gag upon it, which is true. Amazing. It kills them. I knew a man who had lung cancer, throat cancer, because he smoked like crazy for I don't know how many years. So, you know, the, what do they call that thing where they put a hole in your throat so that you can breathe? Yeah, he stuck his cigarette in there. Wicked love their sin, even when they gag upon it. They love their sin. They want it more, even though it kills them or makes them sick, is what Zophar is talking about in this verse. 16, he shall suck the poison of asps. The viper's tongue shall slay him. Zophar says that the wicked stuff themselves full of evil, and it kills them. 17, he shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey, and butter. In other words, Zophar says that the wicked do not enjoy the pleasant things of life. The wicked squander what could be good times. 18. That which he labored for shall be restored and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be and ye shall not rejoice in it. The wicked cannot fully enjoy the things that they work for, is what Zophar says. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently, violently taken away an house which he builded not. Zophar says that the wicked use people, and then they take what is not theirs. They may get what they want, but they're not going to enjoy it. And it will cost them in the end. 20. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. In other words, so far says self-centered people, sinners who use and abuse others are never satisfied. And they have no quietness in their heart. They are not satisfied. They are not happy with who they, with who they are, because self makes a lousy God. They are not happy with what they have because material things make a lousy God. When self is on the throne, material possessions are on the throne, you got two lousy gods there and they're not going to make you happy. 21. There shall none of his food be left, therefore shall no man look for his goods. So far says that the greedy whine and they lie and they manipulate to get what they want. And then they lose it all in the end anyway. 22. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When the wicked <coughs> think that they are close to having everything that they want, then trouble hits. And they end up losing it all. Boy, this is so true. All this stuff is very true about the wicked. 23. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Zophar says that while the wicked are filling their bellies with their sins, God will give them a taste of his anger. How many people are burning in hell today? who were on drugs, who were committing the sin of drunkenness and other types of sins that just satisfy their sinful desires. And right in the middle of it all, bang, God kills them. And the next thing they know, they go from their pleasure 
to eternal hellfire in a heartbeat. 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of bronze shall strike him through. Zophar says that while the wicked are filling their bellies with their sins, God will give them a taste of his anger. Zophar says that while the evil person is fleeing one set of troubles, they'll run headfirst right into another set. 25. It is drawn and cometh out of his body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. This pictures the wicked being bounced around from trouble to trouble and then getting close to death more than one time. 26. All darkness shall be laid up for his treasures. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tent. So far says that the lives of the wicked will be counted as a complete waste. What a waste. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. The wicked person's iniquity is going to be revealed and Christ rejecting impenitent sinners will be judged by God in public. That's what this verse is talking about. 28. The increase of his house shall depart and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. Zophar says that nothing will survive God's wrath and nothing that Christ rejecting sinners love will survive the anger of God either. They're going to lose it all and their lives will be a complete waste. 29. This is the portion of a wicked man from God and the heritage appointed unto him by God. Zophar says that God has the sinner's future planned for them. These are the things that they can look forward to if they don't repent. The things stated in this chapter, which was filled with a lot of accurate information from God concerning the wicked. Good for Zophar. It was a, it was a good dissertation on the fate of the wicked. Of course, it didn't help Job any. But anyway, a lot of truth here. And you can study God's Word and get all the truth that you want. Four complete series, going on five, going through every single verse of the Bible, verse by verse. 37 years of archives are at the Bible, versebyverse.com, where all you have to do is choose, click, and listen, and all you ever need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word to the Bible, versebyverse.com. Check it out today. Study God's Word with me. It'll bless you because it is the Word of God. If you'd like to be a part of Coffee Break, I should say Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. And when you take a break from studying with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret. For scripture verse by verse. So long, everyone.